It's a sad day for Lexus around the world. Even though it might not directly affect us in the United States quite yet, over in Europe, the Lexus lineup goes electrified only as LC and RCF are retired. Grab your handkerchiefs, grab your flowers, and pour one out for our homie, the LC and the RCF. Let's get into it. <laughs> Guys, it's not just the LC and the RCF that are discontinued in Europe. It's also the V8. The V8 is completely gone from the lineup over there, and it's been getting killed off over the years. It has been, from my understanding, the LC 500 V8, the five liter with the you know 472 horsepower or so, as well as the RCF. That, those have been discontinued in most of Western Europe for a year or two now. This recent discontinuation here is now for the UK. And I feel like this is a disease that's spreading westward. It's only a matter of time here in the United States that, well, it'd be nice to go to the sandals right now. It's a nice ad, I'm not sponsored by them. Obviously this is over auto car. It's just gonna spread to the United States before we know it. V8 is on the way out. The, the only saving grace, we can cross our fingers for the LFR. The LFR is the replacement in some ways of the LFA, kind of. It's not a V10, it's not naturally as for a twin turbo V8. Uh, high performance race car should be coming for the Lexus lineup, Pop possibly the Toyota lineup as well. And that would have a four liter twin turbo V8, possibly plug-in hybrid, tons of power, tons of torque. So yeah, that means hybrids and EVs are the only things being sold in Europe. Now, Lexus, officially wants to be fully 100% battery electric by 2030 in Europe, China, and the United States. So it's only a matter of time. Let's see if I can zoom in so you guys don't get destroyed by those ads as we watch. So it's only a matter of time. When do I think these are going to be killed off in the United States? Uh, two years. I give them two years. So by the end of 2026, you won't have any more LC V8s being sold you won't have any more RCFs being sold. Spokesperson for the brand cited legislation and homologation issues as the reason for the withdrawal. Now, homologation issues, the only thing I can think of is for racing. Their GT3 car, the RCF is super old. It's still competing really well though, but they, they need something new. Now, sadly in Europe, most places don't even have the IS. Now the IS can be had with a hybrid in certain markets, but it never made it here to the United States, at least not yet. The only two V8 cars left in the UK at this moment are the Mustang and the Corvette. The LC has been on sale since 2017. It received the convertible in 2020 and it has sold 624 units in the UK over its lifetime. The RC had the IS as four-cylinder hybrid at launch, but it was dropped in 2020, and then it was offered exclusive, exclusively as the RCF with the naturally aspirated V8. The RC only sold 15 examples last year and only 12 in 2022. So pour one out for our homies, the LC and RC. The, I mean, the LC and RC, their, their time is limited. There's talk of, of there's talks out of Japan that a new coupe is coming to replace both the LC and RC, and we would get twin turbo V6 hybrid sort of stuff. Not nearly as exciting as a naturally aspirated five liter V8, but it will be fast. There's no doubt about it. And there will be a halo car, right? The LFR. So those are the two new coupes um, coming in the near future how near I would say we're two years out. Let's take our microscope from Europe and let's focus on the luxury market here in the United States. BMW is really, do, really doing well. And I have, I'm gonna have to make another video if I get around to it about BMW's uh, dealer meeting. It was very interesting, but BMW is doing well and Lexus is right behind. Lexus is actually having, look at the growth. We had a 15% Q1 change. Now, if Lexus was able to pump out their hybrids at a high level, then they they would be selling even faster. Now, BMW is seeing the success of electric vehicles conversely, and I'm driving an i7 
X Drive 60 this week. It's like $150,000. It has plenty of uh, luxury, plenty, too much tech. I'll explain that in the review. It's a freaking land yacht. The thing is enormous, but has four wheel steering. So that helps. Anyways, BMW is like the only company right now that is doing well with EVs. Right now, BMW has one of the, is one of the fastest selling brands in March with a 31 day turnover. Toyota had 22 days and Honda had 28 days. So they're even selling faster than Lexus right now. BMW is giving luxury customers what they want on multiple fronts. One in six BMW sold last month was an EV and leasing is readily available. Get this, their lease penetration is about 50%. That's pretty high. Now you would want it to be a little bit higher, to be honest. I think luxury brands want their lease penetration to be in the sixties and seventies. So you have returning customers. Leasing is extremely important when it comes to EVs, because then you can bake in the EV tax credit into it. And you're not limited to my knowledge to the $55,000 sedan limit or the, was it 80, $85,000 SUV limit. But Lexus though is charging forward. And if they can keep this growth up, they might be able to catch BMW by the end of this year. Mercedes is kind of stalling out a little bit, up only 3%, slightly outpacing the growth of BMW. Audi though, minus 16%. Cadillac minus 2%. Why is Audi down so much? There are, uh, I don't know what the volume is, but there've been Audi stuck at ports in the USA because they have illegal parts. So I don't know what's going on there to be honest, but Volvo massive surge as well. Look at Volvo guys, Volvo surging into the top. What is this? The top six of luxury. I have a Volvo XC 90 T8 recharge, uh, coming in the coming weeks, but Volvo surging up 17%. Acura though, they just announced the ADX, um, kind of a lifted, I'm assuming all wheel drive Integra and, or an HRV, like a fancier HRV, but they also have a refreshed MDX coming. They're down 9%. That is quite shocking. I don't know why they're down so much. Uh, Lincoln up 31%. Land Rover just drove the Defender. It is amazing. The Range Rover, uh, Range, Range Rover Evoque I tested was not a very good car, but the Defender was fantastic. 18% up Land Rover. They're doing something right. They've even, uh, they're even outpacing Genesis right now. If a Genesis G70 rear, rear wheel drive, 3.3 turbo in the driveway. I didn't realize it was rear wheel drive. Most of them I, I get are all wheel drive from Genesis. And I started powering out of a turn. I'm like, this is rear wheel drive. <laughs> this is not all wheel drive. Infinity getting crushed down 12%. What's happening to Porsche? What is going on to Porsche down 23%? Overall, the luxury market's only up 2%. The entire market was up about five to 6%. So the luxury market's really uh, fallen off here in growth. Lexus though, delivered first quarter record, first quarter record of 78,471. Now Lexus is historically slow starting the year. So we take 78, 471 times four, they're back over 300,000 units. I don't know what their record is in the United States. It might be 325,000 units. I should probably look that up. Yeah, maybe back in 2015, Lexus sold 344,000 units. That was probably their peak at 313. Uh, they, they'll pass 2023. They'll pass 2021. But guys, this is on the lower number. Remember Q1 sales are typically pretty poor. So this could, this could keep going. Remember, this is a record breaking quarter, even outselling the quarter, the, the highest first quarter in 2015. So Q1 in 2015 was 77,180. If we go back, they outpaced it by a uh, thousand units here or about 1300 units. So Lexus could be, if they keep this up, they could have the best year ever in company history here in the United States. And if they sell, let's say 350,000 units, will they pass BMW? Last year, BMW sold 276,000, but 330,000, 
they have never eclipsed 350,000 BMW. So it's going to be a race between BMW and Lexus here in the United States for the rest of the year. And Lexus carrying the most momentum here. I cannot wait to see how this shakes out. And I'm glad Automotive News is no longer including Tesla in the luxury race. I never really considered them luxury after they introduced the Model Y and the Model 3, their mass market EV brand at that point with some really expensive models too. But just because you have some really expensive models doesn't mean your whole lineup is a luxury brand or the whole brand is a luxury brand. Anyways, I'm not going to get off on Tesla right now. Now, they're saying the GX had a 30% drop in sales as they are switching over to the GX 550. Uh, the TX is making up for those sales already at 10,000 units so far this year. But when the G guys and the GX is available on the market at high vol well, high volume for GX, 30, 40, 40 plus thousand units a year. Watch out BMW. And BMW's incentives right now are up 53% to push that volume to try to keep them above Lexus and at the top spot in the market. They're incentivizing over $4,200 per transaction. I don't have information here compared to let's say Lexus and even BMW's fastest EVs, the iX and the i5, the fastest selling EVs, are still far slower than the normal BMW, which their sales rate is around 30 days, right? These are up to about 50 days, but those are selling fast for an EV right now in the current market. Now, what's funny here is the XC40 recharge is selling fast. Maybe they're not producing a lot. The review I did only has like a thousand views on the XC40. So that tells me there's not a lot of people researching the XC40. So maybe they're getting... I don't know. I just don't understand what's going on there with the XC40 and why my views are down, but the sale, the fast sales of the XC40 are up. Conversely, so BMW has some of the fastest selling luxury EVs, Lexus and Genesis rotting logs on the on the dealership lots right now. So are the Mercedes-Benz EQS. That is insane. 130 day supply. We're sorry. That's the average days on market. That is literally like more than a third of the year that the EQS is sitting around. And the value on the EQS drops faster than any other vehicle currently on the market. It's a joke. Uh, Ford Mustang Mach-E sitting around on lots. They overproduced them. And so they're having to cut production on them to my understanding. EQS and other Mercedes. No one wants those Mercedes EVs. Uh, it's interesting that the BMW EV buyers are far more interested in the Mercedes EV buyers. Is it due to better product? Yes. Mercedes EVs look stupid. <laughs> so the EV market's kind of hard to understand, but look at this. Look at this. The fastest days on market for used cars. Okay. RX Hybrid, NX Hybrid, NX250. People just want a cheap NX the newest generation because they didn't make this 250 with the first generation. Um, it's a dog. So there are, people are just buying it for that NX, that Lexus brat badge because the 250 shouldn't be offered in my opinion in a luxury car, 200 horsepower. This isn't 1999 anymore. Anyways, Kia Nero plug-in hybrid behind the Lexus IS 500 are, are fat, selling very, very fast on the used market. Wow, how many Lexus models are in here selling this fast? This is crazy. ES is in there. Lexus IS, RX, ES again. They're destroying the used market right now. The Lexus models are selling super, super fast um, as well because the, the demand for their new products is super high, right? So it's very interesting. But I got to shut it down there. It started with V8s going out the window, going the way of the dodo bird. Um, and Lexus, let's keep them in the market here in the United States until the government forces you to kill them. The LC500 doesn't need to change. Just keep the 5 liter V8, keep it around for 20 years, do what you need to do to keep it around. The RC, it's, it's fine. But the LC really is a crown jewel of the Lexus lineup. So anyways, yeah, shut down there. I'll see you guys lamenting in the comments below with your bleeding hearts. Long live the V8. Long live the Lexus V8. That's a part of its heritage. The brand started on the backs of a Japanese four liter V8 with, with the help, I think with Yamaha, Yamaha might've helped uh, with the tuning of that motor. I got to shut it down there. Thank you guys and peace out.